Call to order the December 19th, 2018 Planning and Zoning Commission. Roll call. Barbie. Here. Buckley. Here. Castro. Klein. Here. Maxwell. Here. Wright. Here. Chair Doe. Here. Six present. Approval of the agenda. Any additions, deletions, or corrections? And if none, I'll take a motion. So moved. So moved by Buckley. Second. Second. Second by Barbie. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Approval of the minutes. We will do the October 17th minutes. Are there any additions, deletions, or corrections? And if not, I'll take a motion. So moved. So moved by Wright. Second. Second by Buckley. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. The November 7th, 2018 Could minutes. We just have a motion passes on for Oh, the October? I'm sorry. Yeah. Motion passes. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Too fast. Too fast. <laughs> <laughs> Slow down. We're, we're quick. November 7th, 2018 um, meeting minutes. Any additions, deletions, or corrections? And if none, I'll take a motion. So moved. So moved by Barbie. Second. Second by Wright. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. And motion passes on those. This is a public prep public participation portion of the meeting. Anybody who would like to speak on anything that is not part of the agenda is welcome to come to the podium. Okay, there being no one, I move to new business. Our first item is a public hearing, a petition by DeKalb County, represented by John Heimbach of Larson and Darby Group for approval of amendments to ordinances 98-37 and 98-38 to allow for additions and renovations to the DeKalb County Rehab and Nursing Center at 2600 North Annie Glidden Road. And I open to the petitioners. If you could state your name and address, we would appreciate that. I am uh, John Heimbach from Larson and Darby Architects, uh, located at 4949 Harrison Avenue in Rockford. Um, tonight we want to take a look at an amendment to the original ordinance for the, the nursing home that was uh, built uh, in, actually they occupied it in uh, early uh, 2000, so it's about 18 years old now. Uh, it is currently uh, 100 and it's currently licensed for 190 beds and about an 83,000 square foot facility and we are looking at uh, several additions and renovations to the existing building um, one step too far um, we're looking at a, the primary addition that we're looking at is a transitional care unit that will occur to the east between the existing uh, nursing home and the wetlands area. Um, that will be attached, their, their current administration building is in the, the southeast corner of the, the campus there and the, the new addition will be connected to that, um, to that building. Um, the intention here is uh, there have been uh, a good deal of studies in the, the county uh, indicating that uh, transitional and rehabilitative care uh, is, is short and the uh, um, nursing home uh, administration has made a presentation to the state uh, health facilities um, planning and standards committee and has have been approved to add a new facility for the purposes of rehab and uh, transitional care what we're looking at adding is an 18 room um, 18 bed essentially facility they'll all be single rooms uh, that will meet uh, medicare standards the rooms are all sized uh, also to meet uh, bariatric standards for for larger uh, patients and residents in addition to that we are looking at um, renovating uh, 13 rooms in an existing wing bringing them up to the Medicare standards <coughs> so that they can also serve as a supplement to the new 18 uh, beds of the addition other project components will include 
uh, an addition in the center court that will replace their existing gazebo. This addition is an activity center. Um, currently, they're, they're dining rooms, and there are um, three dining rooms involved in this particular renovation. The dining rooms serve a dual purpose as uh, activity and dining, so it becomes a little bit of a lo logistical challenge every time there's a meal. It's all <coughs> set up for a meal. They have to tear back down, set up for activities. As soon as the activity is complete, they set up for the next meal, and that cycle just continues throughout the day. By building a dedicated activity center, we can relieve a lot of that logistical pressure and, and uh, make the, the living environment a little bit better for the residents and also a little bit more workable for the staff. Now, in addition, since we're building this activity center in right in the heart of the, uh, the facility, we'll be able to use corridors that access to that to transport uh, any kind of meals, laundry, uh, garbage, anything else that would be a normal service traffic through those corridors and avoid the traffic through the resident corridors. Currently, right now, the resident corridors handle all the resident traffic and, and everything else. And it, uh, again, it's something that, <coughs> that um, by moving that, uh, that service traffic out of there will enhance <coughs> the overall livability of the facility and uh, make it a little bit better. Um, in addition to that, we're looking at uh, adding some serving kitchens adjacent to the existing dining rooms. These serving kitchens are going to be there to help uh, improve just the, the meal plans and also menu options. And then we're making some uh, physical plant changes also. We're upgrading the fire alarm system, adding a, <coughs> we're putting in a new nurse call system. Uh, we're going to be adding a new chiller with a larger capacity so that, uh, that they will have the ability to maintain temperatures throughout not only the existing facility but the new addition. And the fact that we're adding a new chiller, we're going to be keeping the old one in operation so the two can serve as a backup to each other in the event of any kind of a downtime or maintenance. And then we're also doing some upgrades to the emergency power system and uh, adding upgrades so that uh, boiler systems can be upgraded in the future without additional downtime. Um, this particular drawing shows, actually I'm back up a little bit here. In, in addition to the renovations, we're also going through and upgrading finishes uh, and lighting in a variety of the areas, in existing dining rooms, in the, the front lobby, the entry, um, and throughout the facility to really upgrade that appearance. The goal here is to make this overall facility uh, not only provide additional functions here, but to make the facility uh, more competitive and position itself better in the market moving forward into the next 10 years and beyond. So that's, that's really what is driving uh, this, this addition, these renovations at this time. Uh, we are taking, this, this drawing really is showing a lot of the, the uh, demolition and renovation work that has to occur outside the facility. So relocation and upgrading of a lot of the existing storm and sanitary sewers. There is currently a path that goes all the way around the facility that's used for fire and emergency uh, vehicles. Based on the location of this new addition, that path is going to have to adjust a little bit to the east and, and uh, get very close to and I believe even overlap the, the property line a little bit. We're also upgrading the landscaping and all the exterior courtyards uh, around the entrance and then all, uh, the courtyards in the, uh, the interior uh, around that activity center. And we're going to be taking a look at adding some additional landscaping uh, around the east side of the, the new addition between there and the um, wetlands area just to upgrade the landscaping throughout. So these are some of the landscape plans. Uh, 
Uh, the building appearance and elevations of the building are intended to be essentially an extension of the existing building. They'll have the same, same materials, uh, same scale, same height. And it's, it's, a, it's got a nice residential character both inside and out, and we're, we're wanting to continue that with the additions. We've gone through to do a, a parking study to verify that, uh, that this addition will not have any uh, detrimental impact on, on the existing parking. When we did the original building in 2000, um, there, uh, there was uh, studies done. The, the health department uh, it has, well, actually between the health department and the nursing home is, is an existing multi-purpose facility. That, that multi-purpose facility is used by both the health department and the nursing home currently. Uh, and it's uh, the, the uh, events that occur in that multi-purpose building can get fairly crowded at times. And because of that, the original parking was designed with, with additional parking spaces for some of the surge of, of those events. So currently, even with these additions, we still have a surplus of parking well beyond the uh, uh, zoning requirements. Currently, I think the site has uh, 383 <coughs> parking spaces, and we're in need of approximately 330. I don't know the exact number. But um, there is still a surplus of about 50 spaces mm. uh, remaining. And that also includes the, the additional buildings that are on the property. There is a, uh, oh, a county, uh, let's see, there's an assisted living facility that has most of its own parking, but there's also an additional county facility to the south, south that shares some of this parking here. And uh, even with those in there, we still have adequate parking. So basically what this is, these, these are my notes going through and just kind of verifying what we've got and, and uh, what we'll need. Uh, and taking a look at all the requirements of each individual facility. I, I, I apologize, the orientation of the building flips around a little bit. I, I, uh, <laughs> but nevertheless, you can, you can see what the existing facility is. And we're here, we're, we're going to be adding to the the primary addition there is to, uh, to the, towards the bottom of the page. And I think that gives kind of a brief overview of what we are looking at doing. Um, I've been working with Dan in the last couple of days to just kind of pull some thoughts together on this and, and uh, give a presentation. Is there any questions that uh, any of you would have uh, regarding this? Uh, I, I have one. I do think that plan is a good one. I was on the board of the nursing home up until a year or so ago, so I'm pretty familiar with it. Uh, some of the ladies in the garden club who have decorated that center part over the years were quite disturbed about losing it. Yeah. Is there going to be something that will be available in the summer for residents to get out? That was an ideal place for them to sometimes, you know, get outside and be in that center area. Is there something that'll replace that? Well, the, the activity center that we're putting in there to essentially to replace the gazebo uh, does not fill the space entirely. So we're still going to end up with, with four landscaped areas around that. Uh, and, and I believe that um, the nursing home has been working with the, garden, the master gardeners to uh, get some of their ideas and their input and, and looking for them actually to help on some of the plantings going forward into this. I believe that's correct. Yeah. One of my neighbors is a member of that. I'll make her very happy to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> but overall, I think it's an excellent uh, plan and I wholeheartedly support it. <clears throat> if we have any further questions, we'll have you come back up. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hey, Dan. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, the <coughs> the uh, staff report is provided in your packets there. Um, so the ordinance approving the the facility was approved in 1998. Um, 
in a, that ordinance that did approve uh, a plan that was attached to the ordinance and pretty much reflects the current layout since they're adding on to the uh, facility adding beds and adding on to the expanding the footprint that requires amendment to the ordinance and also the ordinance 9838 which was the final plan proved in conjunction with that so as the applicant indicated did they explain what the, the number of beds they have what they're expanding to in terms of the square footage again they're adding um, on the I guess the southeast side of the site in this location here with the addition and that's as you can see this bike path or this walking path here which goes around the site and also around this wetland area to the east which is owned by the city is going to have to be uh, relocated slightly with the improvements and this shows the uh, floor plan layout which the applicant went over in terms of all the uh, changes regarding the inside of the site and what they're planning uh, this shows the this is the layout plan north is kind of to the this area here this is the addition here this is the relocated path which does mm -hmm. go over the lot line into the city property slightly in this area the lot line is kind of in this area here kind of hard to see but they do encroach over that so uh, they'll have to get a plat of easement granted by the city to the county for that in terms of uh, they'll construct it they'll maintain it they maintain the existing path around that site it's a wetland area over there there's no future uh, ability to construct anything over there um, so plans were distributed out to staff uh, for review or engineer fire department etc and we did get comments back they did revise them and there is in uh, some updated letters which I'll go over in a second here uh, the building will be about 20 feet from the eastern property line um, this is currently a planned development residential uh, site and in the PDR district um, the only there is a 30-foot buffer requirement between PDR and residential zoning the site to the east owned by the city actually over here here's a property line in black it is zoned residential there's no chance for any development there with the wetland so we do approve a waiver of that uh, setback the building will be set back 20 feet from the property line in terms of parking the applicant went over that mm -hmm. they did provide a parking count study of the current uh, uses and using our parking formula in the UDO and there are 383 parking spaces located on the campus uh, that does exclude the assisted living facility they have their own parking here um, but there are 383 spaces in this area here and the breakdown is that there are 143 required spaces for the rehab and nursing center that's with the additional rooms uh, 59 spaces for the county health department uh, 59 required for the multi-purpose room which is in that building and 65 spaces for the community outreach building on the uh, south end of the site uh, that was mentioned so that results in 326 required spaces they have 383 spaces so they have adequate parking we have a current count now and that will be required to be put on the plan so as it goes forward any future additions or changes uh, we'll know what the count is at that time as mentioned the bike path will be it's 10 foot wide will be relocated on the city owned property slightly there is an intergovernmental agreement uh, with the county back from 02 that indicates that the county will construct any bike path on there they have to maintain it snow plow it sweep it maintain it in the future so uh, that's already covered um, as mentioned the landscape plan we were looking to get some uh, more plantings um, they have there are about 35 plantings that will have to be removed with the addition but they're planning over 200 new plantings on the site and we just uh, asked the applicant and they've agreed to to take some of the quantity of plantings they're in the courtyard and spread them out a little bit more on the east and north sides of the site uh, to um, even it out a little bit more so that will have to be done revised and uh, reviewed by staff prior to going to the council in uh, January if approved so I prepared a sample motion and the updated staff report which was provided to you tonight uh, recommends approval of the plans that you do have um, and waiver of the 30-foot buffer area and then there's uh, um, subject to all staff comments being addressed prior to final council action we did get revised plans from them our engineer reviewed it their latest comments are provided to you tonight and their minor comments once addressed they're not going to revise or change the layout of the building also the fire department had uh, 
wanted to remain in comment regarding the um, location of the fire department connection. This needs to be located, changed on the building, and the applicant has these comments, and they'll be, uh, I think they've agreed that they'll address these prior to council action. There's no issue with them uh, uh, changing the plans as needed. So again, the recommendation is to approve. There's a sample motion there, and be happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you. Um, so I open this, this portion up to anyone in the public that has any questions or comments for um, either the city or the petitioner. And I will note there is no one that has come forth. So um, I turn to commissioners for any questions, comments. Max, I'll start with you. Uh, no, I read this previous and uh, again, you've. Uh, address the question that I had whether um, Zarek's comments and the and the uh, WBK comments were covered and they were so that'll be prior so no mm -hmm. I'm fine thank you okay Jerry no. No? <coughs> nope no Ron nothing further, further? Katarina I think this is a very good plan. I volunteered at the nursing home, so I'm glad it's expanding. And I also, I just want, this seems like a plan that can actually materialize. And I was wondering, when would the building begin the renovation, the chain? Do you have a plan for that? If, if you could go to the podium, please. Um, we are uh, wanting to start with some of the interior renovations as early as next month. Okay. Um, the intention is we would uh, we're, we're hoping to complete the project in about an 18 month time frame so. that's all thank you yeah they have submitted uh, kind of separate the plans they did submit permit plans working on that to do some of the interior work not related to the expansion so they can kind of get uh, going on it over the winter here and then once the Spring comes, we'll be able to start working on the actual expansion and more of the exterior improvements. Okay. Ready for the motion? I, uh, I have, I have, okay. So I'm confused about this bike path. Sorry, it may not, it may just be minor, but I just wanna, I, I have a question. So the path that you're talking about is, is it that kickoff right to the right? Right here where the, Mouse is pointing. Okay. What this is that to the right then that goes around the wetlands? This? Yeah. That's a bike path. That's a path also, walking okay. path. So path. is that also going to be moved? No, I'm just, just this area because the addition is going to be right in this area here. Okay. And we'll go over where the existing path is. So this has to be pushed a little so bit to the east, to the right here. Okay. And this will be redesigned slightly. So there'll still be a, this path and this path going around here. But it'll be redesigned in this area. Okay. And that small, so that smaller, like lighter grassy area, I guess, kind of like where it, it wires off to go to the curve. Yes, right there. So that's not, there's not any concern about it starting into that wetland area. It getting, no, no, it won't go okay. into that area. It's just being slightly redesigned here and still will go around this way and loop okay. here. This path basically would just be moved a little bit further to the right or east here. Okay. But still be integrated into the walking system. So then that circle drive that is there, that's going right where here. the building appears that it'll be going right off into that area where yeah, they're right gonna build, here. right there. What, what is that and where, what Crystal will happen right. with that? What will happen with the circular drive? Yeah. Nothing. Okay. That's staying. The building addition is. I'm having a hard time yeah. envisioning where yeah. the building is actually going to go. Flipping, right? <laughs> it's hard to see. Here's that circular drive right here. Okay. The building addition is right here. Oh. Okay. okay. That makes more sense. And this is the existing here. Okay. So here's a courtyard. The circular drive is not changing at all. Oh, there it is. And there's relocating that path to this location. This is a new location here. Okay. So. It wasn't the bigger circular drive. It was that smaller one that I was asking about. Yeah. Is it just a walkway? This walkway? Mm-hmm. Is that's just a walkway? The, the yeah. area that looks okay. like a putting green right it's out there. Yeah. yeah. It kind of, it. So that's I being removed. Sure that's where the building's going. <coughs> addition. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. But this okay. drive here with the parking. Yeah. That yeah, stays yeah. the same. Okay. There's no change. To okay. That. okay. Okay. 
All right. Okay, so I have to um, give the public one more opportunity to speak if there's any further questions or comments or anyone has any questions or comments. And there being none, I'll close the public hearing. And if there are no other questions or comments, I'll take a motion. Well, I'll make a motion based on the submitted petition and testimony presented. I move that the Planning and Zoning Commission recommend to the City Council approval of amendments to ordinances 98-37 and 98-38 to allow <coughs> for additions and renovations to the DeKalb County Rehab and Nursing Center located at 2600 North Annie Glidden Road by approving an amended development plan dated 12-13-18 prepared by IMEG Landscape Plan, parentheses three sheets, stated 91818 prepared by Larson and Darby Group and Exterior Elevations, two sheets, stated 91818 prepared by Larson and Darby Group and approval of a waiver to Article 5, 13.076A of the UDO that requires a 30-foot buffer from PDR zone property to residential zone property <coughs> subject to all staff comments as indicated on Exhibit A being addressed before final City Council action. Motion's been made by Klein. Second. Second. Seconded by Maxwell. Any further discussion? <coughs> Roll call. Buckley? Yes. Ka Ka uh, excuse me, Klein? Yes. Uh, Maxwell? Yes. Wright? Yes. Barbie? Yes. Chair Doe? Yes. Six yes. Thank you. Motion passed. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> All right, second item is a public <coughs> hearing. It's a petition by B33 Northland Plaza LLC for approval of amendments to ordinances 02 45 and 02 46 to modify the permitted and special uses and sign regulations and to approve a plat of resubdivision for the property generally located <coughs> at the northeast quadrant of Sycamore Road and Barbara Green Road, commonly known as the Northland Plaza. Plaza Shopping Center. And I note the petitioner is here, and if you can state your name and address. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, for the record, my name is Mark Nora, N-O-R-A. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I am with the law firm of Pulsinelli, located at 150 North Riverside Plaza in Chicago, Illinois. We represent B33 Northland Plaza, LLC, and we're here tonight. Uh, it's Basically, it's a three-part application. The first part is to amend plan development 02-45 to expand the list of permitted uses and special uses to permit two additional <coughs> uses we're trying to bring into the shopping center <coughs> and also to bring it in line with what most of the retailers now do uh, as permitted uses in the village. Um, so we're bringing it up to uh, speed, if you will. The major reason we're doing this is the, the Northland Plaza, like many shopping centers throughout the upper Midwest, has had a rather rough time of it. Um, the occupancy at the center as of today is 49%. That is not an economically viable number. Um, and the, my client has worked long and hard and we've worked with the village to create potential uses, and we have identified two potential users. One is a <coughs> national grocery chain, and the other is a national fitness center. Neither of those uses <coughs> would be permitted under the existing zoning. So working with the planning department, we've created what we think is a comprehensive and should be a good, solid, long-term list of permitted uses while also identifying special uses that will always need further consideration, <coughs> excuse me, uh, by the city. Um, but specifically, the, the immediate goal is to be able to bring in, uh, in relatively short order, uh, assuming we can get through the approval process with the city, to bring in the grocer and also to bring in the fitness center. One of the... Um, aspects of this is there is not going to be any additional uh, parking created. There's not going to be any new 
entranceways either onto Sycamore Road or otherwise from the shopping center. We will, however, enter into what's called a reciprocal easement and operating agreement with that would be between Northland Plaza and the fitness uh, center um, as a fee owner if we are able to subdivide the property, which leads us to the second aspect of this application, which is to take over and uh, I'm not sure if we're up here. Let me make sure. No, I turned it off. Now you know why my son thinks I'm the most uh, technologically incompetent person in the state of Illinois. We are not to disclose that to him under any reason. Um, I'll, I'll never live it down this Christmas. Anyway, uh, as you can see, up at the far north end, um, this is the center as, a, as it exists today. This building right here that we're looking at would become the site of the new fitness center. They mm -hmm. want fee title, they don't want to be a tenant. And so we are compelled in order to comply with the Illinois Platt Act and the subdivision ordinance of the city of DeKalb to have a re-subdivision of the existing singular lot. Thanks, Dan. So yes, yeah, so if, you, if you're looking at this right now, uh, that's <coughs> the location of, of where the fitness center would go. The easement agreement would permit the uh, customers um, of the fitness center uh, to have direct access onto Sycamore Road and also access to the parking and the roadways that are not going to be under their ownership but are going to remain under the ownership of B33 Northland Plaza. So we've already delivered uh, a copy of the easement agreement to the planning department as part of our application process. Um, <clears throat> I, I apologize that I cannot at this time disclose the exact identity of the two entities. I think there was something in the paper today. So um, all I can tell you is that we will be working, uh, assuming we get through the subdivision approval process, we've amended the special uses and uh, <coughs> permitted uses for the site. Um, and there's also a signage ordinance component that we'll be working with the, the city to give appropriate um, acknowledgement to the fine work that the city has done with the client in a true uh, public-private partnership, if you will. Um, having said that, the, the last part, <coughs> excuse me, I apologize. Uh, we're seeking to add one additional pylon sign on Sycamore Road. Thanks, Dan. And uh, Dan has the specific heights. They've adjusted, been adjusted since the initial application, I believe. Um, and the goal is to address issues we have of people who are driving either on Sycamore Road or to the south of the shopping center to be able to be aware of what is in the shopping center. We've had a lot of complaints about that mm -hmm. from our existing tenants. We're trying to preserve our tenant base and at the same time expand it, make it a much more economically viable and attractive site. It, it, it's an attempt, an ongoing attempt to, uh, to, um, by the ownership <coughs> to deal with not only the uh, economic <coughs> issues that all shopping centers are dealing with, but also the fact that a, an ever-increasing amount of shopping is being done online and so it's forced people to really give a hard look at how you can bring in the traffic to generate um, the type of customer mix you need to make the center work so that's the rationale why we're be here before you this evening um, do you have any questions that I can address I have one <coughs> using the previous tenants, is the fitness center looking to go into the, pre the old J.C. Penney or the old Carson Berry? Um, Carson Berry. Carson, all the way to the end? Yes. Okay. Up at I'm the trying to figure end. out which one was which. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I question whether you need another sign or not. We've got too many signs <laughs> on Sycamore Road now, and it seems to me, and I drove up and down there several times today, it, it's almost destroys what you want to accomplish it seems to me there's so many signs and you try to look at them if you're cruising along 45 miles an hour 
you're going to end up plowing into one of them if you're not careful. <laughs> if those two big signs that are out there now don't direct people where they're <laughs> supposed to go, I can't imagine how another one is going to make any difference. Well, we are told by um, <coughs> our tenants that one of their major complaints is that they don't think with the existing signage that most casual uh, drivers or others are going to be able to find the signs. I know there's some issues when you're looking at the site from the south going north and in addition we're trying to create as much visibility as we can for the fitness center that's going in um, in, in terms of addressing. I, I appreciate the you know the the concern that the city has I don't think there's a municipality that isn't trying to put in stricter control of the uh, signage um, but this is we're, we're just responding to our tenants it, the structure of e e either the sign itself though is not changing so the amount of square footage and the surface space being advertised is just simply being subdivided correct um, we're within the subdivision, the amount of surface space that were permitted by ordinance by the uh, plan development. Um, so there is, I believe, going to be more signage space in the future than there is now. But it's a de minimis change. So I think maybe some, cl yeah, clarification. Mm -hmm. I can go through the report and kind of okay. clarify okay. some of that. Okay, because I think the there's some confusion on the sign piece. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'll let Dan do his report. We'll open it up to the public, and then if we have any further sure. questions, we'll have it Thank come you. Up. You're welcome. So the uh, okay. staff reports in your packet, the Northland Plaza Shopping Center, that ordinance approving that development was approved in 2002. Uh, the ordinance um, had a statement regarding what permitted uses they were allowed, mostly it indicated retail, restaurants, and banks, and the reference to the plan in terms of any other uses which were mostly retail uses at that time. So nationally recognized fitness facility, as mentioned, is proposed for one of the vacant tenant spaces. The national grocer is actually, our, it, that's a permitted use right now. There's no change right. needed for that. That's a retail use. So what, and looking at that, we w worked with the owner and thought we, let's get the ordinance amended to get a clear use list of what's permitted, what's a special use. Uh, since it's been developed, there's been a few smaller non-retail uses that have gone in there, the Heartland Blood Center, uh, Cricket Wireless, which has some retail there, um, another cash for loan place, I think. So there's been some that's gone in there, so we thought we'd let's get this clear and uh, do an amendment and use the light commercial district use list um, and comparable uses that are allowed in other centers in that area, like the Target area across the street, Walmart, Walmart and Lowe's Strip area, a little bit further down Sycamore Road to get that this <coughs> use list what's allowed here consistent with those two so as the applicant indicated there's um, several non retail uses uh, that are being added there's one uh, tenant that is um, committed to going that is a national fitness facility uh, which is not listed as a permitted use so again we use the light commercial district Again, the main focus by the property owner and the broker are going to be trying to get retail uses in there, um, but they wanted the flexibility to add desirable economically and sustainable uses that are non-retailers to the center. This will be more foot traffic, more traffic to the area, so it'll be a benefit also. And they indicated that the center is about 49% occupied. Um, Again, with the amendment, we're not creating any non-conforming situations. The uses, the non-retail uses out there are put in as a permitted use in the list. Uh, it should also note, too, a little more of the background of the history. In 02, when the development agreement was approved, there was a sales tax sharing agreement with the uh, developer in terms of returning sales tax back to them, and that lasted up until 2013, so that's over. Obviously, at that time, they wanted to encourage and ensure that all the uses were retail generators. So that period has ended, um, so that uh, commitment has ended. So um, we're in support of that, uh, the use list as presented on Exhibit A. And that's kind of the first amendment that they're looking at. Um, the second is the sign amendments, mm -hmm. which was discussed too. Uh, the applicants proposing to amend the regulations, there were sign regs in that plan development ordinance from 2002. 
proposing to add a, a new sign, pylon sign, at the their north access off of Sycamore Road. Um, the applicants are requesting a proposed sign be the same height and size as the one at the signalized intersection with Sycamore Road. That's the existing sign right now. Um, and they've indicated and testified that the need for that additional signage is for to accommodate the future tenants in the back building. So, Dan, I'm sorry, I would not normally interrupt you, but go, ahead. go back to the sign again. So, as you just stated, it'll be that size? Yes. And that's not what the shorter one, like, is at the south. There's end. a recommendation that it be 30 foot in height instead of 41. Ah. Which I agree to, and I'll go over that in a okay. little bit. But they okay. initially proposed a uh, sign exactly the same height, design, number of sign panels. Okay. And the existing sign was shown here, and if you correspond that with the suite numbers, this would be the new national uh, fitness uh, facility, and the new grocer would go up here. And they just took a picture of the existing sign, but this would be the new sign in terms of the tenants. There are the two pylon signs proposed, are the existing and the proposed one, will have different tenants. They will not have the same tenants on there. But they're the same size? They'll be proposed at the same size. We are recommending, and they've agreed, that the height would be reduced from 41 feet to 30 feet. That's correct. Okay, got it. Now the current sign is 41 foot feet? Now? Yes. Okay. And that's what the ordinance allowed from 2002, 41 okay. foot high, 290 square feet, and that's what they built. There's also a sign a uh, similar size uh, height on Barbara Green Road at their entrance. That's the existing image of that. Yeah, I that over there. The National uh, uh, Grocer and the National Fitness Facility will have take up the two panels where the Pennies and Carsons were on that. And the third sign for the development is the south access. That's a smaller one. It's about 60 square feet, 11 and a half feet in height. It has uh, tenants on there too. So that's at the south access on Sycamore Road. That's the three signs, ground signs they have for the whole center so the little one that you just showed is going to stay yeah there's no change there'll that. be another one yep. that's 30 foot yep okay at this location the north axis is shown here um, so as I noted the lack of visibility to the back of building um, you know they have the tenants identified so the new sign will identify the tenants shown in yellow here, except the one for the National Fitness Center and the grocer will be on the existing one here. And it'll, so it'll only be tenants in the back building or this existing building at the corner of Barbara Green and County Farm Road could be on that too. So the recommendation is that for this new sign here, can only have tenants in this back building or this building and cannot have the same tenants as the existing pylon sign. So they can't have any tenants that are up front. They have, they're up near Sycamore Road. They don't need the visibility. They have wall oh. signs and, and not in need of that. Gotcha. So, mm -hmm. um, and as I noted here in the staff report too, that the, you know, in terms of visibility, they're based on where you're at in the center back here. It's anywhere between 630 to 870 feet away from Sycamore Road. So these tenants are, you know, indicating that they want visibility. It's easier to lease out to. They need visibility up on Sycamore Road. Um, and again, the suite numbers are shown on the signs, so they reference back to the tenant spaces. Um, so that new sign will only have tenants in the back building or the smaller building here. And again, the two pylon signs on Sycamore will not have the same tenants on it. Um, and they, as I mentioned, the, um, so the ordinance in 02 did allow the um, pylon sign on Sycamore Road and Barbara Green, the 41 foot high and the 290 square feet, and also allowed uh, 60 square foot signs for each of the restaurant pads and shops building, which were actually four of them, and they never constructed those. Those were tended to be for the shops building up here and the uh, Buffalo Wild Rings and this building here, and I think one here, or the restaurant here, they never built those. They only built the one multi-tenant sign, the smaller one down here. Mm -hmm. So what we're suggesting is we kind of took that square footage and added that, or kind of took that and give them the larger pylon sign. Um, but what we're recommending, because the UDO 
Uh, what UDO states for multi-tenant buildings is you can have a larger sign for a single user uh, that's 10 foot high, 50 square feet ground sign for businesses. If you have a multi-tenant building, you're allowed up to 30 feet in height, 150 square feet, and one per street frontage. So with that standard, what we have in the UDO, and that's <coughs> those regulations were passed after the development Northland Plaza in 02, I believe. So uh, what we suggested is that they were allowed to keep the square footage of the sign at 290 square feet, but maximum sign is at 30 feet, not 41. And they've agreed to that. Um, kind of keep in line with our UDO what that recommends to allow that additional sign um, that would be going in by Egg Haven that's the last right. entrance mm -hmm. point going towards Sycamore right here okay. yep and you got the Panera here so this would be the new sign yep. the existing pylon is here and the smaller smaller pylon is in this location so part of the recommendation is to allow or acknowledge or that existing square 60 square foot smaller sign have that in the ordinance remove the other four ground signs of 60 square feet take those out and uh, accommodate this new pylon sign at 30 feet in height uh, looking at other I noted here in the report the decal market square with the Walmart and Lowe's they have two pylon signs on uh, Sycamore Road I think I have images in your packets there um, they are about 40 foot tall, a little bit smaller, a little bit narrow, 200 square feet, about 360 feet apart. The two signs here for the Northland Plaza will be about 300 feet apart, so somewhat similar in terms of height, a little bit larger in sign, and would be slightly closer, but some similarities in terms of looking at another multi-tenant larger commercial development in that corridor. Uh, they would be comparable uh, somewhat to that. So. Uh, the third kind of piece is the, as was mentioned uh, quickly, the plat. Uh, they want to do a plat of resubdivision to accommodate the future fitness facility. Um, so that's the uh, area there. The plat is shown here too. It's kind of hard to see, and there was actually a revision that's on your dais tonight. Uh, this is the area that shows the subdivided area. The tenant wants to subdivide the parking area in their tenant space. Uh, so that's been reviewed by staff. There's some um, revised plat was submitted. That's on your in front of you tonight uh, there's just a few minor comments that will get that recorded they'll have to provide a cross access easement arrangement which they've submitted the documentation with that to have the access to sycamore road they also need the waivers in terms of typically with a subdivision plat you have to extend utilities they're not needing to do this so it's a little unusual for this plat but that's what they want to do so they need waivers to you know not have a lot on a road frontage <coughs> and they're not extending any utilities they're not sure proposing any improvements with this plat it's just a matter of an ownership so um, so we, um, that's part of the approval too so I have a sample motion in here that recommends approval of the uh, kind of three pieces the exhibit a which is the use list um, again that file is a light commercial district it gives some uh, non-retail uses um, either permitted or special use it's uh, comparable to the uses that are allowed in the other shopping areas along Sycamore Road. Um, approval Exhibit B, that's the uh, sign package. Includes that additional pylon sign at 30 feet in height, 290 square feet. Again, no two tenants will be on both those signs. And the new sign can only have the tenants of the back building or that building on Barber Green Road. So that's the language in the recommendation for that. Um, and then approval of the plat of subdivision subject to all staff comments being addressed prior to any final city council action the ordinance also uh, proposal the motion does also approve the uh, 60 square foot sign 11 and a half foot high the existing one on Sycamore Road removes those four other ones that were allowed in the ordinance those are taken out as uh, also part of it um, and then the final condition there is the uh, prior construction of the new pylon sign they don't have a drawing for that they'll have to submit a course of permit showing the height design size and indicating that it and showing that it does have a similar design to the other ground signs and that would be reviewed by staff and there's also some uh, minor landscaping requirements that are required at the base of the sign in our UDO so they have to show a detail of that before they get a permit uh, meeting all those requirements
That's all. Okay. Um, so I now open to um, anyone in the public, since this is a public hearing, if anyone has any comments or questions. And there being none, I start with, um, I move to the commissioners for any questions or comments. I'll start with you, Katerina. Yeah, I share your concern about the, the signs. We have too many signs, and I don't like them when they're flashing, but this one is not going to flash, right? No. No lights, okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Unless somebody burns them. Yeah. <laughs> well, on that subject, it seems yeah. to me the big argument for this additional sign is the lack of visibility to this. Mm -hmm. But I question that. Uh, do you have any evidence that any of the bill, any of the businesses that closed in there <coughs> closed because of the lack of visibility? They closed because of the lack of customers. Yeah. Well, that's right. <laughs> right. I don't think that had to do with visibility. It had well, to do with the nature of the business, and they couldn't attract the customers. Um, I am not aware of any conversations on that regard with any of the ex-tenants. Um, but what we do have is the conversations we've had with the existing tenants. What we desperately don't want to have happen is for the existing tenants to become ex-tenants. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to be coy about this. It's a serious problem. Mm -hmm. As was noted, when you're set 800 feet back from the road, you don't have a lot of visibility from a car passing down Sycamore Road. They're not going to see you. Mm -hmm. Unless somebody's going to be driving like this, like one member of my family, and probably cause an accident. We'd like to avoid that as well. And my point is, if yeah. somebody's going down the route 40 road 45 miles an hour, or whatever the limit is there, they're not going to be able to focus on these signs, particularly uh, you whiz by them. I, I just question how whether another one's going to help the business any. The logic is that when someone's looking for a specific location, if they can't see it from the roadway, but there's a sign there that identifies that tenant on the pylon, then they know to turn in to the driveway. Um, if there is no pylon sign, they'll just keep on driving. And the only issue is that the sign is after the entrance, so they've already passed it. So, I mean, that's just... It's it depends upon which way they're going, but... Yeah. No, they're well, traveling just <laughs> south. Depends which way you're going. Yeah. 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 yeah, from where I would come from, it's after the entrance. Okay. But mm -hmm. if you come from Sycamore, yeah. it's before. But I understand. I, un point, I understand your concern. Yeah, and I, I can I understand the concerns, and we did too, on the yeah. having another sign at that height. So we looked at the ordinance, and they agreed to reduce the height, keep the same size, but... Um, I think it's important to note that it's you know we want to be uh, supportive of businesses and they've come to us with this need in terms of visibility and probably going back they you know they probably would should have had the two pylon signs on Sycamore Road and a smaller one on Barbara Green the large one on Barbara Green's probably not needed that high and that many but um, and Sycamore Road's a key and if you look at the other developments we want to make sure we're kind of treating everybody you know consistently along there um, you know, with the Walmart and Lowe's with their two pylon signs are <coughs> similar size, um, about the same distance apart, um, probably have fewer potential tenants, I think, in some cases in terms of that far back um, as this center does. And with the change in the retail, what they're doing here too is dividing some of the existing spaces, adding more tenants than originally, you know, the Pennies and the Carsons are being split, so there's more need for identification up front than compared when it was built when you had larger uh, retailers in there. Is there any date when there's the start of the construction? Well, part of that's going to be determined by whether we obtain the approvals okay. we need to go forward. But assuming we do, I know I believe first quarter of, of 2019 is the target date. There's one grocery chain I really want to have here. But mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Hopefully know it's not Treasure is. Island. But <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I, should, <laughs> I had friends who were well, the company, so I should say. Uh, I can actually speak to previous tenants who have left there because they couldn't be seen back there. They are now in other locations here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're clients of mine that I've had lengthy discussions with over the last five and a half years of they were in one place, they were actually right behind next to the eye care place, I believe, 
I've had conversation with the eye care place looking for ways that they were looking for ways to direct traffic to them because nobody knows they're back there. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I don't I don't personally and my business is at the beginning of all of that in front of um, this plaza. I even forget what's back there sometimes and I work right in front of it. Yeah. I think the difference with this location as opposed to maybe Lowe's, Walmart and the plaza across the street is there's a lot of front lot buildings here that you don't have on those other locations you cannot see, especially what's further there? down at that end, you can't see what's back there. Mm -hmm. I forget Buffalo Wild Wings is back there. And as for the sign on Barber Green, I come past that every day when I turn in or out to go to work. I, f I didn't even realize the sign was there until I saw the picture, I'm like, oh, there's a sign over there, that's right. Because it's not obtrusive. It's just kind of part of the Which building. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'll be happy to see more tenants back there. I think we yes. need it. Jerry? Um, well, I, <laughs> I would love to see a big sign. I have a business that sits oh, off of Sycamore right. Road and sign is just a, mm -hmm. a, a problem. <coughs> And uh, I do, th I, people always say, you know, you need a sign out front. Yeah, well, I have one about this big. You know. <laughs> so I, I uh, you know, I think there is a need for, for that, especially as we try to attract businesses to this location and uh, try to fill those spaces. I mean, we, we probably need to do what we can to help them be exposed to uh, the community. So, um, and I think it's a, it's a good, project so we appreciate mm -hmm. it okay. Nick? Uh, I'm gonna have to say I'm pretty sympathetic because my degree is in graphic design and in advertising and uh, you know I think we can all appreciate and be empathetic toward uh, what is the um, quickly dwindling retail traffic situation all over the United mm -hmm. States I mean people have pop-up stores filling spaces for a fraction of what those rents were and we certainly don't want to do anything to discourage anyone from moving in here um, again you've provided the comparables uh, to the surrounding areas we're not doing any major changes to the, the ordinance as it stands and anything we can do to help promote uh, more retail environment around here to stay and move in uh, I'm absolutely for Thank you. so I have a question about the sign is and this might be more to Dan. I'm not sure where to start with this question, though. So this new sign, I am a little concerned, as Katerina had mentioned, I think, um, how far back it is. I, I know that's a tricky corner there. There's the sloping of the, the, you know, right off the sidewalk in front of where might be a good placement for it, so that might not work. Why, why not in that middle median? rather than right there behind a tree so you're or questioning can the, the location tree come of, out and the sign the go there sign? well one thing we need to look at is visibility there's a sight distance visibility we don't want the sign too close uh up here because it block visibility as you would exit the site so mm -hmm. we have an ordinance where uh, you measure the sight distance triangle to make sure it's not in that area they chose this area back here um i don't i don't know if it matters tree? Well, they'll have to submit a more detailed plan when they get a permit and show the exact location, mm -hmm. how they're going to landscape around it. Are they going to remove any existing landscaping? There is some landscaping you can kind of see, and more in this area. I think this area is pretty open. There's a planning bed here, so. So why there rather than in that median, though? The me what median? You're talking about it's that little tiny strip there. Isn't there a median? It's a right curb. here. Yeah, it's awful. Yeah, no. that's. I, I don't know if there's enough width in there. there. I never like go to the feet. There's out there, no so grass in it. I don't believe that's just okay. like you couldn't, a big you couldn't area. support it there. I don't know if there's no. enough width. The maintenance would be probably no. a problem. Okay. So then, my understanding, based on what you said, the other four signs, and I'm putting that in quotes because there's no not four. So that smaller. That sign one. will now go away no, no that will stay no, this is a new that sign. will stay that will be accommodated in the ordinance so what is the four signs that you said would be removed in the ordinance that there's no existing signs are built the ordinance from o2 allowed oh, a ground four. sign for each of the restaurant pads okay. and gotcha. the shops building yeah, the verbiage in there would yeah have. and only okay. one of those four was actually constructed okay. three you'd never were yeah. gotcha yeah i will have to say the one thing that has been 
has always been confusing to me that I hear from um, people that come to visit the area is where that smaller sign is the items that are on that smaller sign don't coincide with where that sign is placed and so people always yeah. think egg haven is right there and it's yeah and yeah. and i've actually gotten behind people where i think they automatically just stopped really fast because they thought they needed to yeah. turn there so i i yeah. i think the idea of the extra sign is good because of the visibility i agree with with the need for that piece um it just this that has been a little yeah. confusing so yeah the uh, owner broke it they'll have to coordinate that there's no restrictions on what tenants can be on this sign right so right. they'll but to have that other sign down a little further i think you know closer to the egg haven area oh, yeah that would make more will sense be helpful yeah. to you know kind of give people that Absolutely. hey there's something down here yeah. yeah um and i will say whenever i travel i i tend to drive a lot and so i'm always in areas looking for you know uh, maybe have to run to verizon or whatever to do something and it is frustrating when you're in an area that you don't know you're not familiar with and you but you know there's a shop there and, and your google map says turn here but then there's no sign and you go well why am i turning here so um i think i like the fact that one you're going to adjust the signs and two you're going to kind of line them up with the areas and, and what kind of follows them um, and so i agree that extra visibility for those <coughs> tenants in the back, back is going to be yes. yeah going to be pretty crucial um will that also include um i'm trying to think the south so there's that south where heartland blood center is there's nothing they're not even on a sign right now i don't think or if they are it's so. really small yeah they're on Barbara Green. so side. is that are they going to be added yeah. to us yeah. yeah this yeah. sign the new pylon sign will have any tenant in this building okay or this one gotcha they desired that one too it's vacant beyond the heartland or heartland blood center yeah. so if something else so moves in there with them then they, they could go on that because they're too. back here the visibility is pretty poor from sycamore yeah. road gotcha yeah okay good okay um i want to give the public another opportunity to speak if there's any further questions or comments and there be none i'll close the public hearing and any further questions or comments from the commissioners no um so if there's nothing further i'd be happy to take a motion a motion okay Go ahead. Based on the upon submitted petition and testimony presented, uh, I move that the Planning and Zoning Commission recommend to the City Council approval an amendment to the Plan Development Ordinance 02-45 and 02-46 <coughs> to modify the permitted and special uses per the attached indicated on Exhibit A, the sign amendments and conditions as shown on Exhibit B, and to approve the plat of the redistribution resubdivision of number two for Northland Plaza dated 11 15 18 prepared by the National Surve Survey Service incorporated at the Northland Plaza Shopping Center along Sycamore Road and subject to the amendments and conditions of staff comments as shown in Exhibit C on Exhibit C sorry second motion made by Maxwell seconded by Wright <coughs> any further discussion roll call Klein Klein, yes. Uh, Maxwell? Yes. Wright? Yes. Barbie? Yes. Buckley? Yes. Chair Doe? Yes. Six yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the tip on the oh, medication. <laughs> <laughs> Item number three, we have a public hearing, a petition by Miguel Mendoza and A&D Property Management, LLC, for approval of a special use permit for a vehicle service facility at 1806, that's 1806 Sycamore Road. And I open to the petitioner. And if you can state your name and address, please. Miguel Mendoza, 8515 Mason Avenue. And you're welcome to pull that microphone up if you need to. Thanks. Thanks. 
Um, we, I've been working uh, with uh, with Ryan. He was over at A and D uh, Property Management to uh, petition for a special use permit for a um, a building that was previously a uh, Mobile One uh, Loop Express shop. Um, it's been vacant for about a little over three years now, and uh, we I'm trying to uh, lease it to um, to open up a repair shop where it's uh, you know no renovations, no um, extra signage or anything just you know as it was but uh, a repair shop instead of a lube, lube express so as you can see it's just it's got uh, two or four overhead doors to accommodate for uh, for pulling in vehicles for repair. Um, I don't really see the building being used for anything other than that since it looks like an auto repair shop mm -hmm. to me. Um, there's not <laughs> much I can say other than that. <laughs> I'm welcome to take <laughs> any questions. Okay. Um, we'll let, go ahead and let Dan do his report and if we have any questions, we'll have you come back up. Sure. Thank you. Okay, Dan. Thank you. Uh, as mentioned, the applicants are proposing a vehicle service facility in the building at the location. That's about 1,200 square foot uh, building, two service bays, 10 parking spaces, including handicap space on the site. Um, vehicle service facility is a special use in the general commercial district, which is site is zoned. I provided the definition for vehicle service facility in the staff report there, but basically it includes, we kind of have two levels of vehicle service. One is a vehicle repair facility, which is more uh, body work, pain, um, more heavier um, working on the motors, et cetera, or um, it's a little more intense, I guess, type use. That's also a special use in that district. The vehicle service facility covers your oil changes and then also um, does include minor repairs to the vehicles, replacement of parts and engine services but not including any body repairs or major mechanical overhauling. So in talking to the applicant early, that's, this was the use that they were proposing to do. I think they mentioned it's going to be about 50% of the lighter vehicle service facility all changes about 50% of the motor, more the um, mechanical work. Uh, the building on the site was constructed in about uh, 1998. It was formerly used as a vehicle oil change operation, the Mobile One Lube Express, and that closed about 2015, three years ago. Uh, there was no documentation on a special use for this particular site. Um, as mentioned, the applicant's not proposing any improvements, no expansion to the uh, uh, site. They're using the existing parking area in terms of layout, existing building. Uh, there are 10, it is a small site, there's uh, just 10 parking spaces on the property, so we did take a look at the what parking would be required. Um, UDO does require one space for every employee in the maximum shift and three s spaces for every service bay and one space for every vehicle customarily used in the operation. So there's two service bays, um, there'll be, according to the applicant, a maximum of three employees on the maximum shift. And they also indicated they'll have a, a smaller trailer that's associated with the operation business. They'll be parked on the site. So there's 10 required spaces. They have 10 on the site. So they're right at the parking. Um, we are making some recommendations. So I'll go over in a little more detail some conditions regarding the number of inoperable vehicles that can be on site, stored on site overnight. We're going to limit that, to suggest that be limited no more than 10 days where an inoperable vehicle can be stored on the property. It's also recommended that no more than five inoperable vehicles be stored on the site overnight and that there be no damage vehicles requiring body work or vehicles with flat tires be parked on the site overnight. And finally, it's recommended the parking of these inoperable vehicles, um, and you, they can't park them off the property. And all vehicle repair work must be conducted indoors in the service bays, and there shall be no outside storage of any materials. Um, regarding the parking lot, staff's recommending that the parking needs to be seal coated and restriped. So we're recommending that that be done within actually 120 days, not 90 days, after approval of special use by the uh, city council. So that will get them into spring, and at that time we'd require them to um, seal coat that and stripe it properly. 
and they're also a requirement to put a handicap sign on the site there's a handicap space um, right here there's no sign so we're requiring that to be installed prior to them being operational so with the special use we have the findings of fact that's required for every special use uh, the first one looks at the uh, if it applies or complies with all the regulations of the UDO the GC district uh, which it does and we have conditions added on that will make it to bring it into compliance with the standards uh, That it won't be detrimental to the surrounding value of the um, Property values in the surrounding area the surrounding area is has a mix of commercial uses many vehicle type related uses there is a um, Auto repair vehicle service facility here Merlin's the muffler located adjacent up by Sycamore Road. We have Bemis Toyota uh, enterprise rent a car right in front of it so we have other auto related uses in that area so there should be no detrimental effect on the property values in the surrounding area um, can it locate within the site is it going to affect the uh, development of the surrounding area surrounding areas already pretty much developed so there'll be no effect on that there was a former uh, oil change operation in the building before all the utilities are already provided to the subject site and it will not be detrimental to the surrounding area. Uh, it will take up a vacant building, tenant space, and should add to the economic development in that area and in the Sycamore Road corridor. Uh, we did receive one citizen response form from Steve Irving representing 1826, 1836, and 1846 Sycamore Road, indicated in support of the request. This had concerns regarding any uh, junk or unlicensed vehicles on the property, and I think the conditions that we're recommending would uh, address that. Um, so we are recommending approval there's a sample motion and the list of conditions on exhibit a again the parking lot should be seal coded and restriped in compliance with the state accessibility code in the city within 120 days after approval of the special use by the council handicap sign be installed on the site prior to them operating any inoperable vehicle shall not be parked on the site for more than 10 days we do put a definition for our municipal code, we do define that in our nuisance ordinance, an operable vehicle. So we added that here to make it clear what that constitutes an operable vehicle. No more than five inoperable vehicles stored on the site overnight. We just wanted to make sure we put these in because it is a small site. We just want to make sure that there was, and the business owner doesn't want to have a bunch of inoperable vehicles parked on site overnight for several days. Uh, they didn't indicate some vehicles may be up to 10 days to get repaired. So. We just don't want all those taking up all the parking spaces where the regular customers who want service during the day can't get in there. And we didn't want uh, vehicles being parked off site and adjacent properties because there was no room on this site. So that's restricted. Again, no damage vehicles requiring body work or flat tires can be parked overnight. There may be some perhaps during the day being serviced, but nothing overnight. Other repair work must be, of course, conducted indoors, no outside storage of materials. Uh, storage of any vehicles or trailers on the subject site not associated with special use is prohibited. There has in the past been some of the U-Haul rental trucks pa uh, parked over there, and I think they've ended that agreement with them. So nothing, other users in that area can't park their vehicles over there. And just on the survey, when they submit for a building permit, if approved, that they indicate the number of required and provided parking spaces on that plan. So that's the conditions. Again, we recommend approval and be happy to answer any questions. Okay. Thank you. I open now to the public if there's anyone who has any questions or comments that they would like to um, pose. They're welcome to come to the podium. There being none, I turn to the commissioners for any questions or comments. So I'll start at that end. Um, <clears throat> I, I guess half mm. comment, half question. Um, do you feel that that five inoperable vehicles outside of the facility at any time is going to be enough space? I mean, I'm only thinking in terms of the fact that, I mean, obviously you can store two in the bays at night too, but, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, sometimes people don't get to their cars fast enough. Sometimes you're waiting on parts. Uh, it seems kind of limiting. Uh, and, and I'm all for the project. I'm just concerned for you. Uh, yeah, so that was definitely a concern that, uh, that I spoke to uh, Dan about. Um, five including any on the property so not necessarily uh, outside really mm -hmm. um, any vehicles that are to stay overnight that are av uh, available to stay inside would be better for the security of the customer as well yeah. so um, 
you know, maximum five, I think, would, would be our, our top limit that we would want to have. Um, okay. You know, if a customer leaves it overnight and can't pick it up that same day. Yeah, we initially, in talking to Miguel, that we thought maybe two or three, and he indicated that uh, prefer a little bit more, a few more, five, just yes. to make sure that if they do have some additional ones, they there's not a violation issue. So yeah I, it just yeah. even that seems limiting to so me we start lower and then he requested uh, right. agreed to five so i um yeah. I, I requested five just so that we cover ourselves sure. and don't violate yeah anything. i think you mentioned okay. that the and typically you'd probably just have a couple overnight yeah you know, one or but two. some may be there for up to 10 days so mm -hmm. i think we're both comfortable with the five i'm good then yeah uh you heard the conditions that uh the city planner just uh I listed a number of them. Are there any there that you can't comply with that you think are unreasonable? No, I received an email from Dan. And, uh, so everything's agreeable spoke, yeah. that he listed? All of them. And then I noticed on the property there's a fenced-in area, I suppose, for the garbage containers and stuff. Right. There's a dumpster behind That's it, on, I believe. on the property, this property, right? Yeah, it's right in the yeah. corner. It is screened. It's right up here. Is there a photo of it? So that's adequate for your waste that you'll have, uh, you can keep it inside that fenced-in area? Uh, it, w what kind of waste do you mean? Like oil? Pardon? What kind of waste are we talking about? Well, I thought on the property where I drove out and looked yeah. at, there's a, a, there's a dumpster area right there, there that's got a fence around it that I assume was for waste. Just, I think that's just a dumpster for like cardboard and stuff. We yeah. won't be really doing any... Um, but that would be adequate yeah. for all of the... Right the waste that you would have. Yeah. Okay. Dan, could you clarify something for me, please? Sure. Five vehicles on the property, that's including potentially two inside, then only three outside? Yeah, on the it's property. It's total in or out. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think they mentioned they'd probably like to have some inside just for security. Mm -hmm. and right. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, do you do you have an existing business now where you service cars? Or you no. This would be your first run at this. Sorry. This would be your first. Uh, I'm representing Miguel Mendoza Sr., which is my father. He's a mechanic. Oh, okay. So oh. I will. I'm just here petitioning for the special use permit. <laughs> I'm not a mechanic by trade myself, but I, uh, <laughs> I do know my way around cars growing up with them. All right. All right. All right. Um, I was going to ask. Uh, there's a. You, they said something about a trailer on site. What what is what is contained in that? Uh, most likely a race car for marketing purposes. Um, that will be taken out on weekends to uh, to race tracks and um, for performance and just marketing for our, our, our for our auto shop. Okay. And the uh, property has uh, four overhead uh, uh, the doors right yeah. front and back. Yeah. Maybe two in front. Of uh, does it does how many cars can be inside at one time only two or two. four two. only two only two okay. all right I think that's and you sh you're positive that uh, five inoperable cars is enough yes <laughs> that's right. more than I want to ever have okay Anything else, Ron? Hmm? Do you have anything else? Hmm. Oh, Katarina? So I was just wondering about the inoperable vehicle. So it shall not be parked there on the site for more than 10 days, but you can basically always have inoperable vehicles on the site if they're not the same vehicles. Correct. Correct. Right. Right? No, one so vehicle So there could always be five there, but uh, they have to be five new ones every 10 days, basically. <laughs> yeah, no one car <laughs> for more than 10 days. Yeah. And yeah, they could have five every night, different ones. Yeah. And yeah. I had a little trouble with the difference between a damaged and the inoperable vehicle, because if, if your vehicle has a flat tire, it's basically also inoperable, at least to me. Right. So, but but I, I see the differentiation under three and five, I guess. Yeah, they don't plan to do any body work there, so they didn't plan to have any no. cars that need But an inoperable vehicle could also have a flat tire. Yeah, I just pulled that definition from our code, so. Yeah. But then there's that additional condition that about the flat tires and damaged cars not being allowed, so. Mm -hmm. 
So I wonder at number four on Exhibit A, where we're talking about the no more than five inoperable vehicles, I wonder if maybe should, uh, maybe number five too. Maybe number, yeah, number four and five. At the end of each of those, would it be wise to say at any given time? Well, the four is just overnight, yeah. so I guess during the day they could have more than. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're just concerned about the overnight. Uh, during the day they may have more, I mean. And fix them, yeah. Yeah, they're busy, That's and it's we gotta think of enforcement too. We have several conditions, a lot of operational conditions here, so we don't make sure we can, if there's a complaint or something, we can easily enforce this, so. How does this get enforced? Well, yeah, it's passed, and then uh, we can do routine checks, or I think mo for the most part it would result if there was any complaints regarding junk vehicles on the site or From how it looks. From neighbors or citizens or whatever. And these do, you know, we do routine checks occasionally of past approvals and to make sure they're complying, so. Okay. Yeah. Just and if they're in violation, it's noted. They're sent a notice that they're in violation, given a certain amount of time to resolve that, and per our standard kind of procedure for property maintenance. and. Okay. This is, is even more secluded than Northland Plaza. Yeah, it yeah. is. <laughs> the signage, yeah. 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 How do exactly. Find out? Yeah, they, uh, one condition I had to mention, they do have an existing sign. It looks like the realtor put a thing over it, but there was a sign there for the uh, oil change place, mm -hmm. which they can keep. It's just that stuck at that, kept at that size that it exists mm -hmm. now, and that's the condition 10. They also have a sign panel, I believe, out in Sycamore Road, multi tenant, that they're allowed to put some advertising on. Right, I believe there's a sign, uh, like a pylon sign, that's uh, currently flipped upside down uh, when the tenant, when the previous owner moved out. Um, oh yeah, that's I up on Sycamore so Road. Yeah. 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 yeah, So they huh. have some identification mm -hmm. up there. Does the ordinance or does the the regulation, I guess, for the number of cars overnight, does that apply to existing businesses? Is that the same as what's out there now? To other business no. like businesses? No. Okay. This is a special use of this a particular condition on that. So other car repair places uh, that may have been in town for a while, they don't have that restriction. Okay. So we did uh, use some of these um, conditions somewhat similar to um, a couple of years ago, Line Night Tire did get a special yeah. use. I don't know if you members that were on at the time may remember that. So a few of these conditions were kind of pulled off of that in terms of, you know, out store door storage of materials and all the work must be indoors. I think there was a limit on inoperable vehicles too. I think that was a shorter time frame with them. Yeah, I How believe many, seven so. days maybe. Yeah. yeah. So we use that from a couple others, but there's some others that have been in the city for a while that don't have these similar ones, so. Thank you. Okay. All right, so one more opportunity for the public if anyone has any questions or comments. <coughs> And there be none, I close the public hearing. And if there are no further questions by the commissioners, I'd be happy to take a motion. I can move. Based upon the submitted petition and testimony presented, I move that the Planning and Zoning Commission forward its finding of fact, it fi its findings of fact, and recommend to the City Council approval of a special use permit for a vehicle service facility on the subject site located at 1806 Sycamore Road per the conditions as indicated on Exhibit A. Second. Motion made by Barbie, second by Klein. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Maxwell? Yes. Wright? Yes. Barbie? Yes. Buckley? Yes. Klein? Yes. Cherdo? Yes. Six yes. Uh, motion passes. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Very much so. Reports. Yes, uh, as we go into 2019, uh, we have two meetings scheduled, and I did forward the 2019 schedule to you. Uh, January 9th and 23rd, as, as of now, there's no hearing set for January 9th, so um, if that's canceled, you'll be informed the week before of that and we'll probably set a hearing regarding some of these text amendments we had a discussion on at the last meeting except the signs these miscellaneous text amendments will look to probably prepare a hearing for the january 23rd meeting at this time it looks like um 
just I know there was a discussion I think at the last meeting regarding OMA requirements of the Meetings Act and if you have to renew check with the deputy city clerk there's no requirement that that you renew each year I think they do recommend that if you're reappointed after your term that you take a refresher course but there's no requirement that you annually take that so great and happy uh, 2018 happy uh, Merry Christmas happy New Year to everybody thanks yeah. for all your hard work this year we have had a very exciting and and uh, I want some momentous because that's not really the right <laughs> word I'm thinking but we've had a very productive year this year um, and so I want to wish everybody a happy holiday and a happy new year and thank you for all your work and welcome to the new members on our commission um, and uh, we've done some great things for the city so I, I appreciate everything you all do and have done and I look forward to 2019 likewise and with that I'll Exciting. be happy to take I'll a second that to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> You'll second so, that. Moved. <laughs> so moved by Buckley <laughs> Second and by mm -hmm. Maxwell. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. We are adjourned. No, I want to stay. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> you want to stay?